You can get by in this country without a proper license. And while that's not great advice for doctors, lawyers, or Olivia Rodrigo, it worked out for 2K when they made All-Pro Football 2K8. 2K lost their license to make NFL games in 2005 when the league signed a deal with the devil to make Madden the only game officially sanctioned by the Shield. 2K said no license, no problem, and they made All-Pro Football 2K8, a game without NFL teams or logos, but with former NFL greats providing their likenesses. I first bought this game when I was a snot-nosed 6th grader, and I'm really excited to revisit it. I dusted off my old Xbox 360 and got to work creating a new team. There's so many great quarterbacks to choose from on this list, and also Troy Aikman. But I'm going to build my team around a running back. One of the best running backs to ever do it. Yeah, you know who I'm talking about. You guessed it, Packers legend Paul Hornig. That is, until I looked at his Wikipedia and found out that he was suspended a year for gambling. That's just not going to fly on my team. I needed someone a little less problematic, so I'm riding with the first running back to ever crack 2,000 yards. Hey, Twitter world, it's me, OJ Mahomes. Say what you will about the juice, but he served his time in prison for stealing his own memorabilia, and I think it's only fair that he gets a second chance. With OJ toting the rock, we'll have a formidable running game, and I'm going to pair him with legendary shit talker and tight end extraordinaire Shannon Sharp. Skip, 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 but you know what, skip, 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 skip. Sharp was an absolute menace who once goaded Derek Thomas into three personal fouls on one drive by reciting his girlfriend's phone number to him before the play. Sharp and Juice are my two gold players, and it's time to fill out the rest of my roster. I had the late great defensive tackle Jerome Brown, wide receiver Andre Reed, and safety Dick Anderson as my silver tier players. At the risk of making an extremely esoteric comparison that will likely alienate parts of my audience, Dick Anderson looks remarkably like the doctor at the beginning of Fall at New Vegas. Another cool part about Dick Anderson, besides his name being Dick, is that he has an ability called Signal Stealer that allows him to channel the New England Patriots and call out the offense's play before it happens. All of the players in this game have abilities rather than numeric values. It's a nice little change up. I fill out my bronze players with quarterback Jim Harbaugh, corner Albert Lewis, D end Clyde Simmons, the late receiver Dwight Clark, center Mick Tinglehoff, and 2022 Hall of Fame left tackle Tony Baselli. You might be asking, why ride with Jim Harbaugh as your quarterback in a game with so many greats? Well, you idiot, Jim Harbaugh was great. He almost went to the Super Bowl with the Indianapolis Colts. He's also so clearly damaged by CTE that he compared his quarterback battle at Michigan to the story of Solomon from the Bible. You just can't make that shit up, and I want that kind of crazy on my squad. With the roster all set, it's time to brand the team. We're going to be called the GOATS, and we hail from the great city of Reno, Nevada, one of America's most beautiful, misunderstood gems. We've got nice navy blue uniforms, and we'll play our home games at Tangiers Stadium. If that name sounds familiar, that's because it is. It's literally the casino from the movie Casino. And if, for some reason, you haven't already seen Casino, please go to your local Blockbuster right now and rent it immediately. Our first game is against the Seattle Sailors at home. The presentation in this game is pretty staggering and it makes you feel like these games are real, despite them being completely made up nonsense time traveling hypothetical realities. The Sailors are led by human tackling dummy Archie Manning and some other all time greats like Matt Snell, Otis Anderson, Steve Tasker, and Bryce Pop. <laughs> we'll see if that's any match for the juice in our gang of gruff misfits. <laughs> OJ wins us the coin toss and we decide to defer till the second half, meaning we're going to kick the ball away. Our generic kicker gives it a nice little boot and the game is underway with quite the thud. On the Sailors first play, Archie tries to throw a quick slant, but our corner reads it like a book and picks it off, an immediate momentum swing to start the game. After the quick turnover, I decide it's time to unleash the juice. OJ gets the ball on our very first play and slices through the defense like a hot knife through butter. We're only two plays into the game and we've already built a seven point lead over the Sailors. 
but the Sailors also happen to have a very adept running game. Running back Matt Snell starts powering through our defense, and we simply have no answer for him. Here's a fun little tidbit about Matt Snell. He was easily the best player in Super Bowl III, accounting for 161 yards and the Jets' only touchdown in their victory. But guess who won MVP? Joe goddamn Namath. On third down, Manning throws a bizarre pass to a receiver who's already out of bounds, and Jeff Yeager tacks on a field goal to make it 7-3. On the ensuing kickoff, one of my nobody white guy receivers finds a lane and sets us up at the 38 yard line. I drop back and throw for the first time with Jim Harbaugh, and given a little time, he actually threads the needle to Shannon Sharp for a first down. A couple plays later, Harbaugh zips a quick slant to Andre Reed for another big gain. Just looking at it, that's some fluidity that you're not going to see in Madden, even 15 years later. My drive stalls on third down, but I actually don't mind kicking field goals in this game. There's no meter to look at, and the stick mechanics are absolutely perfect. When you hit a field goal right, it feels like sex. Or at least what I imagine that feels like. On the first play of the ensuing Sailors possession, my entire defense forgets how to tackle, and Matt Snell goes all the way on an 83-yard touchdown. In a totally classless act, Snell steals military valor and salutes the away crowd. Listen, only my Broncos can do that. It looks like we've got ourselves a good old fashioned running back duel because OJ answers with a long touchdown of his own, speeding faster than a white Ford Bronco all the way to the house. I guess defense is just not on the menu today and Snell fires back with another easy sprint to the end zone to tie the game 17 all. And it's a really good thing that our running game is working because right now Jim Harbaugh is throwing the ball like Russell Westbrook shoots threes. Fortunately, our fridge is still stocked with plenty of juice and OJ takes the Sailors defense for a ride deep into their own territory. You know, it's kind of interesting to think that future generations will remember OJ as the kooky old guy from Twitter, unlike how I remember him, as a great running back and a delightful comedic actor. Juice breaks free again, and I'm sitting pretty with first and goal from the two yard line. But even with four cracks at the end zone, the Sailors defense performs an incredible goal line stand. I decide to go for it on fourth down, and I get completely rejected. It's like Brandon Staley is coaching this team. Well, we can't score on offense, but luckily our defense picks up the slack. We sack the eldest Manning for a safety, giving us a two-point lead, otherwise known as the Iowa football special. Even with good field position, our offense just can't do anything, and it's making our coach make weird facial spasms like he just spent a long weekend with John Mulaney. I try to catch the Sailors napping with a fake punt before half, and that really backfires because now they have time to kick a last second field goal. Thankfully, the kick lands short, but I've proven that I have the clock management skills of prime Andy Reid. It's now the second half, and I'm starting to find a good rhythm with Andre Reid in the passing game. Then I go back to OJ, who stabs a ball in midair and runs for a first down. I'm facing fourth down and nine, and while Jim Harbaugh has all day to throw in the pocket, seriously, all day, he throws into double coverage and Mel Renfro corrals the ball for an interception. I make the mistake of thinking I know how to tackle in this game, and we let Matt Snell run through our defense like he's a make-a-wish kid or something. Snell doesn't have a terminal disease or anything, but this defense is making me wish I did. We move to the fourth quarter and the Sailors are threatening to take a two-score lead, but our D finally stiffens and we force Seattle to settle for a field goal. When you need a big play in the fourth quarter, you think players, not plays. Harbaugh throws a simple screen to OJ, and Mr. Simpson, well, he does the rest. It's OJ's third score of the game, and the crowd is absolutely losing their mind. They're all chanting, OJ did it, OJ did it, and by it, they mean he scored a touchdown. I don't know what else they could be referring to. Harbaugh calls his own number on the two-point conversion, and we're all knotted up at 27. The Sailors get the ball back, and they immediately give the ball to Otis Anderson. And well, he absolutely rips the soul out of our defense for a 73 yard touchdown. And to add insult to injury, he does the cockiest tiptoe of all time into the end zone as the Sailors take a seven point lead. With just under three minutes left in the game, there's still plenty of time for the Goats to march down the field and tie this one up. Chris Dolman sacks Harbaugh on back-to-back -back plays to start this drive, and it looks like we might be dead in the water. But on third and 27, Shannon Sharp splits the cover two defense and somehow moves the chains, barely keeping our hopes alive. After that huge play to Shannon Sharp, 
Harbaugh keeps the offense moving, and I can feel our momentum slowly building with every play. I feel like we're actually going to win this game. OJ snags another ball and takes us into the red zone, which is another name for his... Nope. Nope. I'm not going to say it. I'm not going to say it. Jim Harbaugh picks the wrong time to start misfiring, and we're now staring at a do or die situation on fourth and 10. In a clutch moment like this, I feel like you have to go to Dwight Clark. So does he have another catch in him? Harbaugh takes a seven step drop, but the safety starts to read his eyes. Harbaugh throws to the corner of the end zone, and it's broken up. It's a tough way to lose the game, sure, but it's not unlike a Jim Harbaugh led team to blow it on a low percentage throw like that. Much like Colin Kaepernick, Archie Manning takes a knee, and that'll do it. It's times like these where I must find solace in the words of poets. So I turn to the great orator, Steve Harvey. OJ killed everybody in that driveway. <laughs>